Okay, I read the article you sent me of the lawyer representing some of the January 6th rioters. And I'm going to call them rioters. I'm not calling them insurrectionists, especially not in light of some additional video footage that we've seen. It was a riot. We can agree on that for the, you know, for the most part. The lawyer representing some of them has used terms that we cannot repeat here for because it is bad words. <laughs> but the lawyer representing some of the rioters who were arrested basically referred to them as the only one, the only term I'm going to use is the short bus, because I don't believe the short bus means what people think it means. Uh, it doesn't refer to mentally challenged. It refers to a, a secondary bus that was going to school and maybe had learning disabilities. I don't know. But the short bus, I never even understood as referring to intelligence or uh, any disabilities, just the different bus. But he referred to them, his own clients as short bus and a number of other effing expletives and attacking their intelligence, but also in using words that have not been permissible since Tropic Thunder uh, was released. Now, before anyone poops on the lawyer, you know, you could you could understand a lawyer saying, this is the strategy we're going to adopt. Uh, I was going to say kids, but uh, clients. I'm going to throw you under the bus in the sense that I'm going to throw you under the bus by throwing Trump under the bus, by saying you were naive babes in the woods who fell for the propaganda you were so unintelligent and corruptible yourselves that you couldn't but have been convinced by four years of propaganda, four years of lies of Trump. And so you're not to blame. He's to blame. And you're not to blame because you are so unintelligent. You are so mentally deficient. You are so effing whatever that you can't be held legally responsible for the consequences of your own actions, even assuming they are what they are. I say, I, I tweeted, I responded to it, I said, it's a, bold it's a bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see if it pays off. It's terrible, but it's, that's the rationale. I think it's just terrible that this lawyer thinks this is the way to protect your clients by throwing them under the bus and making them look like bigger victims as opposed to just defending them. But I, I, I know nothing about this lawyer. Is this like a runaway juror as a lawyer? Or is this a lawyer who just took this strategy and it's totally going to backfire? I think it reflects the political bias of uh, lawyers, particularly those that are public defenders and that are what's called CJA lawyers that are appointed on a panel, in, in especially in the District of Columbia. So first, they're lawyers. Second, they're public defender or CJA lawyers, mostly. And third, they're in the District of Columbia. You combine that, you're talking about a 97, 98% chance they hate Trump. So consequently, they cannot view this question objectively. And so they, they have to figure out, how do I defend someone whose behavior I find absurd and insane? Well, they must be idiots. They must be incompetent. They must be incapable of thinking. So I'll pursue an incompetence defense. And then particularly when you have a constant framework of characterizing what your clients do as victims, when you have this sort of victim mindset, victim mentality, that that's what makes them morally worthy or morally excusable. Then you add that layer to it. And I, I told people early on, this is the kind of defense they're likely to get. Now, to their credit, some federal public defenders and CJA lawyers have actually put up a heck of a fight. Some have been demanding discovery that's been very informative. Some have been fighting bail for bail left and right. So some, uh, I don't want to uh, do with a broad brush. I expected this guy to be the norm. <laughs> and But the fact that he was so public about it, Saying, you know, and, and this is like I've dealt with this a lot because this is how lawyers handle so called tax protesters that they say, Oh, you must be an idiot. You must be a nut. You couldn't possibly have a good faith basis for this. You, uh, you know, the, uh, and so that's, and they force them to plead that way that I'm, that they're basically an incompetence defense. They're too stupid to form mental cognizance. And, and we sort of know this in the way that people deal with people who have different political opinions of them. We think our political opinions are because we're smart, because we know the facts, and because we have a good conscience. So if somebody disagrees with us, we either say they're, they're, they've are they been brainwashed, or they're not cognitively capable, they're just dumb, or they're evil. We go into that progress, when in reality, it likely means they have different lived experiences and different trusted sources of information. Um, and but, but it shows you how bad it is that the legal profession I mean, this is why D.C. was never going to be a capable venue. You can't get a fair jury out of D.C. You're not going to get a fair judiciary out of D.C. You can't even get very many fair defense lawyers out of D.C. And you combine the three, you're seeing the reflection of it to where people are being told their only defense is this. As evidence develops, 
that it turns out what many of their clients likely had been telling them continues to get more and more confirmed. They didn't kill anybody. That was a lie. They didn't you know, have a fire extinguisher and attack anybody. That was a lie. They were invited in in some certain cases. They were told it was okay in certain cases. The officers are giving permission in multiple contexts. They're being asked for permission in multiple contexts. Not only are they stepping back, they're waving them in and doing selfies with them. And so the all of these truths are being buried and hidden. They've created their own little Warren Commission to come up with a narrative that is about as honest and truthful as the Warren Commission was. Um, and they're doing the same thing in the criminal context. But what this lawyer did, in my view, was malpractice. You don't throw your clients under the bus like this in the court of public opinion. Well, I know, but you, I mean, look, I, maybe I'm more sensitive and more Puritan because I'm a polite Canadian, which I'm not so polite anymore. But it's just you don't talk like that. You don't swear. You're, you're a lawyer. You don't, you, there's a limit to the swearing. There's a limit to the inflammatory, insulting rhetoric. You don't use the R word, period. And uh, call me a Puritan. Call me an apologist. Call me like whatever you want. You don't use the R word. As far as I'm concerned, you rarely use the F word unless you absolutely have to just for a comedic effect or just for a punch. But what this guy did was denigrating, not, okay, even if it was denigrating to his own clients, like you say, okay, my clients are not legally capable of having committed the crime. It was denigrating to millions of other people in the most insulting way possible. It doesn't make the clients look bad. It makes the lawyer look like he's got a, 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 a loose screw in his head. And I mean, what's terrible is that it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna work against everybody. It's gonna work against the clients because everyone's gonna say, "Look how, look how guilty they are." It's gonna work against the lawyer because they're gonna say, "This guy's a total idiot," and it's gonna, and, and it just insults swaths of the uh, general population. It, it's, just, it's just, it's malpractice to even talk like that and conduct yourself like that publicly when you are a professional because you are a member of a professional order. You have to weigh your words. That's what you get, you get paid for is the words you use. And you can't talk like that, even if you think it's funny. It's not. He's not uh, a shock jock. He's not Howard Stern. He's a, he's a bloody lawyer, uh, and you know, a bloody, not effing lawyer. He's a bloody lawyer, and he should know better, or they should know better. One well, thing. Oh, go it for it. Shows the disdain they have for their for clients, and and that that's the other problem I have with it. You know, the uh, if if you really have that level of disdain, you shouldn't be the lawyer for the client. But this is the nature of a lot of them. They they see themselves as superior to their clients. They don't try to put themselves in their client's shoes. They don't try to understand their client's perspective. They don't try to empathize with their client. They don't try to figure out what the best defense is for their client and, and, and understand their client. And by the way, this is common in political cases. Look at the lawyers who defended Saran Saran. Look at the lawyers who defended uh, James Earl Ray and the MLK assassination. Look at the uh, lawyers in a range of uh, that represented Ted Kaczynski. They often refuse their own client's demands and interests and sacrifice them on the grounds of supporting the institutional narrative, which usually had them labeled crazy, corrupt, but almost always guilty. When in fact that later evidence would show and evidence that was available at the time of the trials would show uh, there were major doubts about their guilt for what they were alleged to have done. But for that, you have to watch a hush hush at vivabarneslaw.locals.com. I heard a noise upstairs that didn't sound good, but I don't hear crying. So I'm going to let it go. Um, I don't know what window liquors means, but uh, another, and, and no, it was a uh, Dan Harrington or a uh, Harrington, Mike Harrington, who posted the short bus always meant mentally, de- mentally, whatever. I, I, okay, I'm just saying my, my, my lived experience with someone doesn't like my experience in life. My wife, you know, they had a short bus at her, a, a shorter bus just because it had fewer people to fill. So you don't get the long bus to fill the short bus. That was my understanding. Maybe I'm wrong, but, and if I am, whatever, I, I, I don't have very much context in which to use short bus ever, nor do I use it. I just, I didn't take it offensively. I just took the rest of what he said to be objectively uh, unjustifiable for any practicing attorney to speak in an interview that you know is going to get circulated around. It's almost like the, it's a runaway, it's a runaway lawyer. <laughs> I mean, yes. Yeah. And, and I think he meant that by the reference to short bus. 